Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Dave Shrine. You probably already knew that. Uh, we're recording the uh, next episode of DAC Talk. I'm super excited to have my buddy Ryan Bellello joining me. Uh, Ryan is the host of the Inside Scope podcast, a podcast that I've grown to love. Um, I love what he's doing with it, the guest that he's bringing on. Uh, he's a master connector, just understands how people think, people work, um, how people network with one another. And so I've asked Ryan to come on DAC Talk today. Um, Ryan, I want to talk with you about launching a podcast and about what's going on with Periscope. So thanks for coming on and uh, hanging out with us tonight. Dave, thanks for having me, man. It's always fun to hang out and chat with you. I know. We're like, hey, I'll invite you onto my podcast if you invite me onto your <laughs> podcast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it just gives us an excuse to hang out. So That's exactly right. And we met for the first time um, at Periscope Summit in September. That was a lot of fun, man. I know that I was kind of like distracted. I'm, I'm trying to run my business and like, you know, everyone's super busy trying to, you know, catch everything at Summit. So like you were super gracious and you even bought me a burger, man. I really appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It's always great when you can turn relationships you've built online into ones that are actually like in the real world because yeah. then it always adds a little more validity to people who are like, who are you talking to online all the time? <laughs> That's so true, man. Well, um, one of the guys on my team, uh, he lives in California and the first time he came out, like we've known each other for a couple of years and, uh, he'd been working for me for like, I don't know, seven months. And I, so I'd send him paychecks and stuff like that. And when he, the first time he came out, he was telling me his wife's like, is he a real person and stuff like that? He's like, yeah, <laughs> like he's a real person just because I haven't met him in real life. Doesn't mean he's not real. And I was real. He came out and he learned it and I really did buy barbecue for him. So it was, uh, it was good. So dude, tell me a little bit about what you have going on. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know, what you're, what you're working towards, what you're working on, uh, the podcast, stuff like that. Just give us a little bit of a background on who is Ryan Bellello. Yeah. So probably about, probably really about a year ago, I finally was like, I need to jump into this world of online business. I've I've been consuming, I've been consuming things from people all over. You know, all these guys that you know, the Pat Flynn's, the Chris Duckers, Michael Hyatt's, all these guys that are that are uber successful with what they're doing. And I'm like, I got to just start putting some of this stuff into action. I got to start seeing like, can I replicate what they're saying they've done um, and what other people have done from what they've learned? And so I kind of just started digging into it. Um, and as I was doing that. Um, I started getting more immersed in what is it with social media that I'm doing? What is it that I like doing? It's more than just me goofing around. Um, there's got to be some some strategic action that I can take that can help coincide with my online business. They kind of go hand in hand. And um, through that process, the world of the world of Periscope came out. And so as I was using it, I was like, this is an opportunity for me to jump on a platform to be an early adopter of something new and just kind of learn, be okay that I'm a novice at it, that I make mistakes and people are like, whatever, we're all learning together. Um, and and I knew that I knew that before I used Periscope that connecting and building relationships was something that A, I enjoyed, but B, I had seen the success in my own life from doing it. And I knew that I could help other people with it. And I was doing it kind of, not intentionally, but it was just something that just came a little natural for me. You're in need of a person who can do this. You're in need of a person who has this. Let's yeah. connect you two and see, see what happens. And so um, through that, I was like, all right, what does that look like for an online business? How can I take that, what I'm doing in the real world, and apply that online? Because I'm connecting with people. One of the people I connected with was you. You and I were in a, in a kind of like a mini mastermind kind of group where we were just kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And I was like, this is kind of my sweet spot. This is what I kind of like, kind of like doing. Yeah. Um, and so I, at that point, was like, all right, what, what can I do to begin to show that this is something that I like doing? This is something that I can do. And I was like, I don't feel like I can do it with a blog. I don't feel like I can do it by just putting words on a screen. And so I was like, I need to do a podcast. It's something I've been, I've been wanting to do for a couple of years ago. I don't know what my idea is, but I just need to put pen to paper. I just need to sit, sit down, brainstorm what this is. And this will be kind of my, my business card. This will be kind of my sign on the front door when people come to my website or people interact with me online. They say, what is it that Ryan's doing? Well, here's, here's, here's the first taste of Ryan as a podcast. And so I had originally tried to create one around a community I was involved with on Facebook, and that really didn't. That what really, that? I don't remember that. Yeah, I haven't really shared it with a ton of people. So actually, my original Ooh, idea. This for, is truly the inside scope from the yeah, host of the is, inside <laughs> scope. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. So my original idea is I was going to do a podcast all around the people in a in a Facebook group called the 30 Days of Hustle. Okay. So this group was a ton of people who were kind of starting out doing their own business, whether it was an organization, maybe it was nonprofit, maybe it was a brand. They were just doing their own thing. They're saying, hey, I want to start something. And I began to see a theme with some of the more regular people who are contributing in that community. And so I said, well, why don't we do a podcast where we kind of feature these stories? You know, all this stuff, there's there's over 10,000 people in this group and I never get to read it all and I'm not going to scroll for hours on end every day through all the non, the stuff that just doesn't matter to this group. It's just irrelevant to me. And I said, let's just make a podcast that features these people and kind of lets them tell their story. But instead of maybe coming off as the expert, maybe they can come off as this is what I'm learning and this is where maybe I could use help. I need somebody who can assist me with this or here's an area where I maybe have a weakness. And it's just another way for the community to kind of help each other out. But it's more spotlight. It's more specific. It's more dedicated to one person, one story, one need rather than the constant stream of, of posts showing up in the group. But as I did that, I was like, I like the idea, but this isn't something I could see myself doing for a while. This isn't something that I'm really excited about. Because the reality is, as I was building and, and, and creating the idea for this podcast, I was immersed in Periscope. I was just, I was in it. I was connecting with people. I was using it. Um, and so that was my, that was my addiction. I was like, I was, I was in it doing, I'm like, why don't I do a podcast on this? A, All right. nobody, pause you want me to real stop. quick. You want me to pause? I okay. want you to pause because- you said something that I think is really, really important. And it's something that I've noticed in my own business. You started to make progress. You started to kind of put the wheels on this thing and get it yeah. in motion. And then you said, it's not something I was really excited about. I don't know if that was your words verbatim, but that's one thing that I found in my business. If I'm not excited about it, if I don't get mm -hmm. fired up about it, um, it winds up not being good for anybody. And there's, you know, in, in your work, and whatever you do, there's always going to be things that you don't like. So I'm not saying like, hey, you should love everything 100% of yeah. the time. But just knowing that anytime I go into something, I'll be like, hey, I hate this. Or hey, this isn't fun for me. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of my cue to not do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. And I never would have even gotten to that point had I not just said, I just need to start doing something. Yeah. I, I keep talking about the podcast. Let's just start here and see where it happens. I never would have scratched my first idea and went with a podcast on Periscope had I never just said, okay, let's just get going. So I interrupted you when you said A. That's what you said. A. a um, uh, <laughs> so I, I said I was involved with Periscope. I was using it and it yeah. was kind of the same idea where I was meeting a lot of new people. People were using it in creative ways. It's a new platform. It's not just typical words on a screen or pictures on a screen or pre-recorded video. This is live interacting with people. And I was experiencing how quickly and how easy it was to gain people's trust, for people to earn my trust, to yeah, get to yeah. know them very quickly. And I was like, people people are scared of it because it's new and getting in front of a camera and being, now I'm not recording video of myself. I'm getting on live video of myself where I can't edit anything out. And so there's just a lot of like, oh, <gasps> about it. And so I wanted to say, let's just share the stories behind it because here's what people are doing and here's the cool part about it. Uh, get, like, get past the tech, get past the, the anxiousness of goofing up, but here's the relationships that I'm building with these people through this platform. And so that's, that was the idea behind the, the Inside Scope is I want to create a podcast about this platform where I can be an ambassador about it, where I can't just get on Periscope and nerd out with all my Periscope friends and we're on Periscope talking about how cool Periscope is. You know, it's kind of like like youth group for me. Like, oh, we're at youth group. Youth group's the greatest and it's, you're only talking with your youth group friends and you're never talking to anybody outside of it. So <laughs> I was like, here it is. I'm using this platform. I want to get into podcasting. Why don't I create a podcast where people who aren't interested in the platform or maybe are all about podcasting, yeah. people are saying, here's a place where I can check it out and learn a little bit more about it without making a full-on commitment of getting into the platform. Yeah, dude. I, so, think, it's, I, well, I think it's great because um, it is exactly what you say it is. Like you see all of these people on Periscope. You see all these different entrepreneurs. Um, you see all these different dreamers. So many talented people. And they get on there 
and you see the real authentic self, but you mm-hmm. only see part of it. Um, I remember there was one episode where you had um, a husband and wife come on, and you may have even had a couple of them, but they were like yep. in New York for a while, and then they moved to LA or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I would have never known that backstory. So really what I want to do to make this DAC talk helpful is I want to discuss with you our di- our various podcasts, and I want to discuss with uh, you for the benefit of people listening who have thought about launching a podcast, um, what actually goes into it. So I'll just kind of kick start here um, to just kick start the conversation. Mm-hmm. But like one of the things that I like, I tried to do a podcast. I did two episodes, two sample episodes of a podcast before I actually launched my first one, which is the church marketing podcast, which for those who don't know, um, in the church world, the word marketing is never used. It's always communication, but the church marketing podcast is truly that it's all about marketing. And so, um, I was thinking about doing a podcast and I emailed this guy named Chuck two episodes. And I said, Hey man, I respect you. I appreciate your opinion. Can you take a listen and tell me what you think? And he basically said, (coughs) excuse me. He basically come back and said, Hey, it's fine. Um, it's not really interesting. I was actually meaning to talk to you about um, doing our podcast. I was like, oh, okay. So we talked about it. And what doing the church marketing podcast forced me to do, which is one thing I think everybody needs to do if they're going to do a podcast, is pick one aspect to podcast on. Rather than picking on like this jack of all trades podcast and talking about everything, mm-hmm. pick one topic and broadcast about that topic. Make sure that it's consistent because the big thing I was having a hard time with was finding that narrow one thing. And I don't know, Mm -hmm. was that your similar experience trying to narrow down exactly what that was going to look like or did it just really come to you naturally? Um, It probably came to me naturally, but only because I had heard so many times that I, like you said, I got to pick one topic. I've got to be specific. I'm not at a point where I'm this, this I don't have 20 years under my belt where I could just do a podcast about whatever topic I want and people are going to listen to it. That's just not where I'm at. I'm I'm young. That's not where I'm at with my business. So if I'm going to pick something, I'm going to go deep on one thing and I'm hopefully going to hit the people that are really excited and really committed to that that one topic. Yeah. No, and it is. It actually stays true every single episode. I've listened to most of them. Um, I think the most recent two I haven't had a chance to listen to yet. But I've listened to all of them, man, and they all stay true to form. So let's talk a little bit about the tools that you're using. I use something called Buzzsprout for mm-hmm. um, for my podcast. And what it does is it allows me to basically upload the audio directly to this program, like this software as a service. I spend like 12 bucks a month. I think I get three hours of um, like podcast dialogue mm-hmm. and uh, it manages all my statistics. It you know, gives me the feed that I need to punch over to iTunes. It's been really, really nice. And it walks me through every single thing that I need to enter in so that it gets entered into iTunes correctly. And when people download it, um, they get it. So it gives me like episode by episode details. Um, It gives me all the total downloads, just a lot of stuff. What are you using um, to manage your podcast? Um, When it comes to, when it comes to the software like that, um, I'm, I'm using Libsyn. um, And so I'm using it. Is that how you say it? Libsyn, yeah, it stands for Liberated Syndication, so it's Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. I always wanted to know, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's liber- yeah that's what it stands for. Um, so that's what I use. That's one that um, I, you probably will hear a lot of the guys who've had podcast, business guys who've had podcasts out for the last five or six years that were using Libsyn. Um, there's other ones that are uh, that are big too, but Libsyn's one I use, and I use it solely just to host the audio file for my podcast. I don't really do anything else with it. You could create blog posts. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but it solely is where I host the file, and then I use it to get all my data, all my analytics on what's happening with downloads, where people are listening, what they're listening on, and so forth. So do you do you enjoy using it? Do you really like using it? Is it easy? Does it seem clunky? Um, for me, it doesn't seem clunky because because it's I'm using it alongside uh, a plugin on my WordPress website. And so once I get it uploaded to Libsyn, all I do is take the that that file and I and I connect it. I literally drop the link to that file in my post on my website for that specific episode. And that's that's all I need to to do after I did the initial setup. That's all I have to do to get it to pop up on my website and then eventually head on over to iTunes. 
Very cool. Yeah, I, that was one of the things that really, excuse me, that was one of the things that really hung me up um, when I was trying to get my first podcast going is like what service to use. Because um, mm-hmm. the thing is, is like even if they offer a free trial, it's like, man, I don't want to get it all set up with, yeah, you know, bumping over to iTunes and then decide I don't like it. So that was really tough. I like Buzzsprout. I wish they gave me more in-depth analytics. Um, that's the one big knock that I'd have on them. And the other big knock um, that I would have, is, and I don't know if Libsyn allows you to do this too, um, or allows you to do this because Buzzsprout doesn't. But like if I need to make a change to a file, you can't change the file once it's uploaded. So you can't say replace this audio file with a new one. If you use something that's like a WordPress based, like a um, like a blueberry pot or a blueberry podcast, I think it's what it's called, um, PowerPress. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll allow you to change the file, but Buzzsprout doesn't. Does Libsyn allow that? Libsyn is again, it's it's just purely for hosting. So yes, what you just talked about, PowerPress by Blueberry. Uh, that's what I. That's the plugin I use. So oh, whatever okay. whatever file link I drop into that blog post, that's gonna post on iTunes. Um, so it doesn't. It, to be honest, it really wouldn't matter where I would pull the audio file. If I have a link for an audio file, I drop it on that post. That's what's gonna show up in in iTunes. Cool. All right, man. So I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. What was it like recording your first episode? Oh, man. Uh, For as much talking as I do and for as much as much periscoping as I do, as much public speaking as I've done, um, it was it was very awkward because it's like I am I'm the leader of the conversation here. I am the facilitator of the conversation. And a I have no clue what's going to come out of the other person's mouth. Um, and two, I have to balance what, how, how involved in the conversation I am because you're featuring a guest and you don't want to talk too much, but you also don't want to just be crickets over on one end and let them ramble on for 30, 40 minutes. So yeah. I was, if you go back and listen to actually episode two of the Inside Scope, that was the first conversation that I recorded with Ryan A. Bell. And that was, <laughs> there's some moments in there where you can definitely tell where I'm just like, just stumbling my way through it, but I got it done. <laughs> and it was all, it's, I, it gets easier and easier with every episode. I can say that. Yeah, it, well, it does show up that way. I didn't know. Um, like I was listening to your first, first episode and I think you said you recorded that one multiple times cause it was just you telling your story, but I yeah. listened to the Ryan Bell one and I was like, Oh my gosh, this thing went all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. It did. It did. There were certain points where it was like, there's probably something I should have cut out of there. There was a part of the episode I should have cut out, but I was just, yeah, it's just, I just knew I got to, I just got to get it done. I got to get over this hurdle of this anxiety of getting the first one done and everyone has a bad episode. I might as well make it my first one and just keep moving forward. Yeah. (laughs) So what are some of the small things that you noticed in that one that you did? Do you listen to your own episodes? Yes. Initially, I mean, when I first did it, yes, I was listening to them pretty regularly, listening all the way through. Now there's certain parts that I'm I'm going back and double checking. And it's more so because, and we probably will get into this a little bit later, I, I'm outsourcing some of the production of the podcast. So there's certain things where I'm more so going back in and making sure that the, the, the person I've hired is is editing it the way that it needs to be edited. So it's, it's become less and less... Um, initially listening to it about me figuring out what I could do better and more so making sure that the the final production is where I want it to be, that the quality of it is where I want it to be. But yeah, I do usually about a week later, I'll go back and listen to the, listen to the previous episode, whether I'm in the car or something and try to listen to 10, 15 minutes of it just to make sure that I'm, I'm not like, Oh boy, you got a really bad verbal pause or something going on in there. Well, you know, I, I'm going to mute it when we, um, when I do post production for this conversation, but I'm like hacking over here, man. Like, (laughs) I don't know what, like (laughs) if you're watching the video, then you see me and Ryan right now, but if you're listening in the car to the audio, like you can't see us, but like Ryan's staring right into the camera. And of course he sees me and I'm like, I've got my head tilted off to the side. I'm like hacking up along. I don't know what happened. Like my voice just went hoarse. So if you're going to launch a podcast, I would say start by launching it, uh, recording that first conversation when you're nice and well and your voice isn't, you know, sound yeah. like whatever mine sounds like. Have water with you, man. I, I, there were so many times where I was, I was recording certain parts where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not going to make it 
for the next three minutes. Like my throat is so dry. Like I need just have a glass of water with you. That, that'll be helpful because you're gonna realize you get cotton mouth yeah. real quick. Yeah, it does happen. And so like, um, so it's funny. Uh, we're recording this right now, and just before we went live, I pressed I pressed play on or start broadcast on Periscope. So even though I'm going to edit these things out, like the people that I'm looking at on Periscope right now, they see my head like going off and they're hearing me hack up along. <laughs> and, oh man, being an entrepreneur and trying to make it happen. Like if you think, if you think that you're the only one experiencing awkwardness and if you think you're the only one where yeah. it's like, dang it, the one night that I get that big opportunity, like I fumble over my words or like I'm hacking up alone. <laughs> Or like my eye won't open. I don't know. Like if you think you're the only one, just like take comfort in knowing that you're not. Everyone puts up a sheen of what they want you to see and there's nothing wrong with that because we do that when we go to Target or when we go to the mall. Mm -hmm. But what you don't see is all of the little ugh that happens in the background. <laughs> and like, and like you know, I'll say it. Like when I record my podcast, Ryan – like the intros and stuff, there's plenty of times where I go back through and I'm like, oh, that was horrible. And I have to record it again mm -hmm. because there's part of me where I like, I want to be natural. I want to be organic. I want it to flow. Um, yeah. But then the other part is like, I don't want to sound like an idiot. So, you yep. know, I try to not script, but I try to give myself direction. Um, but yeah, like I wind up re-recording a bunch of stuff. So what, what are some of the things that you did notice early on that you were doing that you've really tried to kind of bring under control, like low hanging fruit that was easy for you to make your podcast better. Um, one of the things, and I'm 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 grateful for it. One of my guests, uh, Jay Howard, he's uh, he's like going to school or taking classes to become like a talk show host out in California, and he was he was like, man, I, I love I love what you're doing. I love I love the podcast, and he's like, can I give you a, a piece of advice? You know, from talk show land, what I'm learning right here, and it's. He said, follow up what, what the person is saying when you have a guest on. Try to follow up and repeat their last couple of words. And it helps, it helps the, he was like, he hasn't gotten me the article yet. I keep asking for it. But he's like, this is like scientifically proven that, that people are more engaged, your listeners are more engaged, and your, your guest feels more validated in what they're saying and more confident in what they're sharing when you just repeat the last couple of words. So huh. now I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to make us both self-conscious for the remainder of this episode. <laughs> but it's something where I've, I've had to, and if you listen, to, I still do it sometimes. The first few episodes where I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. I heard that, that over and over that, and over That's and cool, over. that's cool. Because I didn't know how to transition into the next conversation, but he, he told me that. So that was a very low low hanging fruit. And luckily I got it in those batch of episodes I recorded before I launched that just following up and just kind of validating what the person is saying has been a way to make the podcast sound better. And I've had people saying they're like, oh, you're very good at at drawing out questions and 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 really getting the guests to open up. And I'm like, I'm I'm not really doing anything different but just repeating what they're saying at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny, but it's true. You get little mental, and like on Periscope, I'm always talking, little mental tweaks, right? Just little mental mm -hmm. shifts that you make that open up a complete new world. And I find that like the difference, like for me often, the difference between what I'm doing and excellence is typically not that, not that much. It's just one or two little very small mm -hmm. things that are very powerful, very like just little... um. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the word. I had Thanks. a, I had a friend, and um, she had to have heart surgery. There was one teeny tiny little piece of her heart that wasn't functioning, but just that teeny tiny piece of her heart threatened her entire life. And that's kind of what I'm going off after. Here. And she's fine. Everything was good. The surgery was successful. It was like okay. ten years ago. But like, it seems like little mental shifts like that are just that mm -hmm. little tiny piece that as long as you put it in place. It's like, that's all you needed. Like it just works. It's just, it just makes things easier. So I love that. Um, any other things that you've kind of learned over the past, what are you on? Like 18 episodes now? Uh, as we record this tomorrow, episode 20 will officially be hitting. Awesome. So airwaves. any other things that you've learned in those 20 episodes? Um, you've, you've got to set out right away being being committed to it because just like any other thing that you start doing whether it's emails you're going to start building a list and you want to email people once a week or you want to do a blog post once a week or whatever it is that you're doing yeah. when when it when it comes to creating that that what 
I feel like it's getting cliche. We're creating that free, va- the valuable content, that that thing that people are just being able to consume without any cost, other than maybe some of their time on their end. You've got to you got to say, I'm going to be committed to this. And podcasting it for at least from what I've experienced between the two, on a week to week basis, you're doing just one episode a week. That's more time consuming than it is to sit down and write a blog post. Yeah. And so, be ready to. I mean, before you start asking questions, what am I going to do when I don't have a guest lined up for next week. I want to be three weeks in advance. What happens when I don't have a guest for the next week ready to go? What am I going to do when someone bails out last minute? What am I going to do when I feel like crap and I'm not feeling good? Yeah. Just start brainstorming what are some of the hurdles or obstacles that could totally derail my progress um, with the podcast. When am I going to take a break? That's something I'm realizing. Like I'm doing it. There's nothing that says I can't take a four-week break and just not have any episodes of it. But just being intentional with this is a commitment. I'm going to be committed to it. How am I going to plan this accordingly so it's not just consuming every thought as I as I build my business? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's one thing that I've been running into. I've had three guests from my church marketing podcast. Um, podcast. I've had three guests kind of bail out last minute or like not be willing to commit. And now I'm to the point where I got to get something recorded this week. So one of the things I'm actually going to do, I've got a webinar Um, it's all about resistance and rejection. I'm just going to use that webinar and I'm just going to go through the slides as the podcast. That's, that's what I'm actually going to (laughs) do. Okay. So if anybody's watching on the video, (laughs) my dog literally just opened the door and walked into my office. So like anybody who's watching this on YouTube or on my blog, like it's just, it's pretty funny. Um, I thought that was your bathroom. No, no, I the no, dog no. was just hanging out in the bathroom. No, it, that's the laundry room. It's a uh, it's a slide <laughs> open door. Oh, okay. And so she paws at it to open up. Unfortunately, gotcha. my wife closed it because that's where the laundry room is at, and she's running the dryer right now. So you know that would be picked up by the mic. But gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, Lucy likes being in here whenever I'm in here. So. Um, just really popular when it comes to six-year-old beagles. They just they I just guess, love me. I guess so. Um, so, but I'm just going to use that webinar and repurpose that, and that's going to be my episode for November because I do one a month. Because um, it's like you said, like you don't think it's going to be a whole lot of work, and then it winds up being a, a lot of work, mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea uh, it was going to be this time consuming, and it is very very uh, time consuming. So one of the things that people often get hung up on is, you know, what equipment should I be using? And, mm-hmm. um, and I think I'm a bad example because I don't know if you know this or not, Ryan, but like I was a musician for a ton of years. Mm-hmm. And so I, I accumulated all of this really expensive, you know, recording equipment. And when I stopped doing music, I didn't sell it. Cause I was like, there's one thing as a musician that you always regret and it's selling gear. And so I was like, I'm not going to sell my gear. I'm going to keep it. Plus it's worth more to keep than it is to sell. So I hung on to it. When I finally launched my first podcast, I was like, sweet, I've got like $3,000 of equipment that I can hook up and just start using. And that's what I did. And so my podcast, um, when I do the church marketing podcast, it sounds really, really good. Now for DAC Talk, uh, because it's video, I don't use that equipment. I don't want the microphone like right in my face. So I yeah. use the Blue Yeti microphone. I have a, uh, I have the silver one, which is the standard, and then I have the uh, carbon fiber one, I think, or the black one, which is the pro. And so I use the Blue Yeti, and I found that it's really good. The only thing that's not good, which people will hear that, like on the recording, is if you make lots of sound wherever it's touching, like it'll pick that up. So I just have to be conscious of what I'm using to record, but I use a Blue Yeti. I got a pop filter on both of them. And what I really like about um, the Blue Yeti is it picks up really good sound. It doesn't have to be close. So like on the video, you can't see it, but the Blue Yeti is like literally right here. It's far enough away from Mm. um, the camera, so it's not on, but it's close enough so that I can be seen. So what do you use for equipment? See, that's good because I'm like the complete opposite of you. And I went with what is what is the bare minimum I need to get started? Because I don't have a huge budget. Um, this is going to cost me some money somewhere. This is more expensive to do than, than, than writing a blog post. I mean, yeah. I need a website and now I need to, to pay for all these little things here and there to host a, a podcast. Um, and so really the only, I mean, outside of my computer, I'm trying to look here as I double check to make sure I'm not, I mean, my microphone, that, that's it. That's what the is only that? hard. 
That is an, uh, it's the Audio Technica ATR 2100. Um, and so for, for people who are not musicians or don't want to buy all this gear, I mean, this is nice because it has the, the spot for the, for the, and I'll hold it up to the camera as people can see it. You know, it's oh, got yeah. the, it's got the USB, but then it's got, is this XLR? Is that XLR, right? XLR, yeah. It has both I, USB I and XLR and a headphone jack. Yeah. And a headphone jack. And so, um, that's all I got right now. I mean, even like you talk about pop filter, that's on my Christmas list. So is a stand for it because I'm like, all right, I need to get some of these things. But I mean, right now. I've got two two bo bobblehead boxes. That's that's what's host. That's what my stand is. You know, it came with the little, um, but it's it, it. I mean, it came with the little stand, which is nice, but it's it's sitting up on two bobbleheads right that's now, a like riot, because man. that elevates the microphone. I'm not like slouching down anymore. Um, and and that's it. I have a computer. I have headphones. I already had headphones. I already had a computer. I just needed to buy a mic. That's the only hardware that I bought for my podcast. It sounds good too, man. Yeah, I love I love the microphone. It's it's the middle, it's the middle of the line. It's the one that I heard over and over again from John Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, Michael Hyatt. Um, there's probably some more that I'm missing, but all of them said if you're gonna get, you know, don't go with the twenty dollar Logitech headset thing because it sounds like you're a sounds like you're like a, uh, a a stewardess on a flight or something talking through those type of speakers. They said just spend fifty bucks, get this. And and this goes into my business. I didn't even pay for this. I did something like a little side work for another entrepreneur and got a fifty dollars Amazon gift card, and I bought the microphone right away. So nice. this sat under my bed for probably six months before I actually launched my podcast because I knew I'm like, all right, I'm gonna buy it. I know at some point I need it. Um, do you want me to go into software at all? You want me to talk yeah, about yeah. software that I'm using? Yeah, so turn that microphone a little bit, man. Like it's got that blue light, and it's like freaking me. Yeah, right there. Like turn it away from me. <laughs> I'm like getting yep. sucked into the blue light. Oh. It's like the it's like the power. It's always on. Yeah, there so, you go. <laughs> um, so as far as software goes, I mean, I am using Libsyn to host, but then uh, I do my interviews on Skype, and so I'm I'm on a Mac. I'm using a, a recording service called Ecam. Yep. Uh, and so that's that what is we're using a, right now. Yeah, and that's what I figured. Uh, so that was thirty bucks um, to buy, and it allows me to record the calls, whether it's the audio or video, it just allows me to record conversations over Skype. Uh, and I knew, based again, based on the research, Skype was kind of the best one to do uh, conversations, whether you're doing video or audio, one-to-one. -one. Um, and so that's what I'm using for, for the interview portion of it. Um, I am using Audacity, as, and that's a free... Um, you're gonna be you're gonna fill in all the the lingo here because I'm probably not gonna say this right. Basically, what I use Audacity for is I record the intro and outro of each podcast, my little blurbs that I give before and after the interview. I do it on Audacity. Um, I don't use GarageBand. I actually tried using GarageBand, and that's where that's Dave was mentioning. Yeah, Dave was mentioning all this recording that I had to do over and over again because the settings, the default settings on GarageBand just didn't work well for, for me talking into a microphone. Audacity was flawless. I didn't have any issues. It worked great right out of the box, even though I downloaded it. Um, but I used Audacity. Okay, and stop real quick. I just got to say this. Sure. One of the things that I've been talking about more and more and more is the idea that we get hung up trying to find free stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've been putting out a tweet. If you worship at the altar of free, you'll die on the bed of exhaustion. And it's just this idea. Yeah that if all you're doing is trying to chase down free software, free pictures, free plugins, mm -hmm. free programs, free graphics, that you're gonna, you're gonna waste so much time and so much effort that you're yep. just gonna kill yourself and become exhausted with mm -hmm. pursuing your dream because it's filled up with a whole bunch of nonsense. That said, every now and again, there's like a hidden gem that's just awesome and it's free. And Audacity is one of those. Like I use Audacity. Um, for a lot of stuff, I, I use um, Logic Pro X, um, mm -hmm. which is 200 bucks on the Mac store, the Mac app store. Um, but prior to that, and when I don't need something that powerful, I just use Audacity as well, and it works awesome. I do all my um, like editing, like if I get an MP3 file and I need to edit it, mm -hmm. I do it all in Audacity. So it's really, really good. So just search the web for Audacity Audio, and uh, it'll give you the link. Yeah. And again, the only reason I stumbled across Audacity is because I've heard of it, but I wasn't trying to use it. I was trying to use GarageBand. Um, the guy who does the post production for my podcast, he's the one that said just just start using Audacity and see how that goes. So that's the software they use, Ecam, 
and Audacity. Um, we, I use Google Drive to host all my files, um, to host the audio, to share it with the guy who's doing the editing for it. That's just the easiest way to do that. Show notes, things like that. That's kind of the software that's used solely for the production of the, um, of the podcast. Cool. Now let's talk briefly about um, sponsorships because you and I have talked a little bit about sponsorship and um, we traded a little bit. And then I've got a sponsorship that you ran, and I think I actually still owe you a little bit of money for that. We'll get that squared away. <laughs> but talk to me a little bit about what, what your approach has been, um, because mm-hmm. I know that that's one question that a lot of people um, have asked um, of people who do podcasting and things like that. So what have you kind of heard? I'll say real quick, uh, for my church marketing podcast, what they've decided is that um, is that the podcast is part of a larger package. So you can't you can't advertise on the podcast unless you do one of the larger packages. It's not like you can advertise on the podcast and the website and the email. It's like, no, like you can advertise on the website, you can advertise in the email, or you can do this package and you get access to the podcast as well. Mm. So they charge a lot of money. It's a couple grand to run an advertisement through, through there. So what, you know, what have you kind of been thinking about processing through, um, you know, as far as advertising goes? As far as advertising goes, I mean, initially, initially when you, you do your research, you're like, you hear the big guys talk about the numbers that are needed to actually get paid advertising on your podcast. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is like three years down the road. Um, and so I said very early on, I said, yeah, I would like to get to a point, but maybe there's a way that, that I can, I can use my platform to, to give access to my community that I know is going to be there. Um, for some advertising in exchange for other people who are gifted at things that I'm not. So I'm really, again, this whole, this ties back to this relationship thing that I was talking about when we first started and it's collaborating. There's gotta be some people who are gifted in some of my weaknesses that are just starting out that would say, oh yeah, I can't afford to advertise anywhere right now. I would, I would gladly take some free ad space. And so, um, so that's what I did to start. So if you listen to the first 10 episodes, I connected with a couple of guys um, and basically just said, I'm going to ask. The worst they're going to say is no. It's not my job to say no. It's their job to say no. Yes. And, and, uh, and so I said, hey, you know, you're doing this. I would gladly provide, uh, you know, I would advertise whatever you want, a business, a product of yours, a resource, something. You just tell me what to my community uh, in exchange for you creating X. So, I, you know, the guy who created my podcast album cover. I don't know. I still don't know what they call that graphic. The lo- logo. I don't know. Whatever it is that you see when you go to my website or you go to uh, iTunes and you see the inside scope. Someone designed that in exchange for advertising on five of my five of my first 10 episodes. Same thing with post-production. The guy I brought on to who now does the post-production for every episode, you know, edits all the pieces together, makes sure that there isn't anything blatantly uh, poor in there that's going to make the, the listening experience not optimal of where, where I've set the bar. Like a dude who's he did, got a hoarse voice but chooses to do a recording anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a little beyond what, what I think he could do but uh, <laughs> to, to fix that. But yeah, I said, hey, I'll, uh, I'll give you advertising on X number of episodes and on my website in exchange for editing. And so he did it and it saved. Again, I was trying to do this on a zero, as close to a zero budget as possible. And I was able to save a few hundred dollars, keep a few hundred dollars in my pocket in exchange for allowing him to advertise on my podcast and and on my website. So that's kind of where it's at right now. It's 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 more of an exchange of what do you have? I have a platform, I have a place where I have people listening who who are person X, person A. You advertise what you need. This is something that I need to help continue to make the podcast grow, continue to deliver what my listeners are expecting. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's so many questions, you know, so many yeah, different things yeah. that you don't really think about going into it. And then all of a sudden, like one thing after another, like one of the things that <coughs> that I have is um, is uh, a program called ID3 Editor, and mm-hmm. it allows me to edit all the metadata. So before I upload my MP3 to Buzzsprout, I upload I, in the MP3 file. I put the artwork. I put all the copyright information. I put all the album information. Mm-hmm. Everything, and so Buzzsprout overrides some of that. But there's, excuse me, there's some that they don't override. So I put all of that in there, and it keeps everything branded together. It keeps everything mm-hmm. nice and cohesive. And that's like, 
twenty dollars, and it's and people wouldn't know that you need to edit the ID three tags in order mm-hmm. to get some of that stuff to show up properly in iTunes. So there's just all these little things that you didn't know. And um, ID three editor is is one of those that I use. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I use. Um, gosh, I can't. I can't remember. But what I one thing that I have um, that I was doing at the beginning when I was recording these DAC talks through Google Hangouts, it was I was just sending everybody to the YouTube page to go watch the episode, and I was like, "That's stupid. Why wouldn't I want to send people back to my website?" So what I've started doing is rather than sending them to any in particular like service hosted page, like I've seen several people doing SoundCloud, and they're sending them to their SoundCloud page. Or they do YouTube and they send them to the YouTube page. Or they do Buzzsprout and Buzzsprout creates a page for you. And I'm sure Libsyn does as mm-hmm. well. Don't do that mess. Put it on your website. Yeah. Send it back to your website. Get the Facebook pixel installed so you can track people coming in. So when you want to do ads, you have tracking information of people who have visited. Uh, put opt-ins. So if people you know download the audio but they want to get the video, put the opt-in there. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. We need to figure out for your website some ways that we can make that sidebar even better and ways we can kind of draw in. Have you had any ideas of how to maximize the landing pages? No, I have not. <laughs> no, I have not had any idea about it. So um, that's, I guess that's that's why I, I pick your brain on all these things all the time because um, you're always pointing out, hey, did you think about this? Did you did you did you notice that? And so. No, that's probably something I need to be given a little more time and attention to. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that I'm going to install on my website, um, particularly for DAC talks and particularly for um, Periscope replays, is um, is a pop up. Now, people hate pop ups, but dude, mm-hmm. they are effective. They mm-hmm. work better than any type of other opt in I've seen. They just mm-hmm. do. As much as people hate them, people use them more. Like, do you hear mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to get that installed because the thing is, is somebody's coming to your website for a particular piece of content, and you've got more content just like that. They're in the best position to say, "Yeah, I'd like to have more information like that. I'd like to hear more of this stuff like that." So I need to be building that stuff out. That's a few things that I need to add to DAC Talks. Now, one of the things I'm I'm curious if you're ever going to do this, but one of the things that I've been doing with DAC Talks is I've been going through and there will be several clips even from this video tonight where I'll do this. I'll take two to three minute clips and I'll break them up into smaller increments and I'll share those as well. So not only will I have the big podcast episode, but I'll also have small two, three minute increment episodes um, that'll coordinate with it. Have you like? Have you seen anybody else do that sort of stuff or what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that would work with like an audio podcast? Um, yeah, I think you could pull out the hard part for me is I I don't do any video when I record. It's in a video format, but we both have our screens off just because I've had some Internet issues and it just eliminates the because well, you're in the third with that, floor but, of a house. Yep, that's I mean, that's another thing, guys. Like I don't have like 100 gigabyte download speeds or anything like that. Like I'm if you guys can you probably can see right now, like I'm in an unfinished office where there's just a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, but that's okay. This is my little corner of the house where I can do my business stuff and it is what it is right now. And I just, I just take advantage of the, of the space that I have. I'm glad you um, ended yeah. that with business stuff and didn't just say where I can do my business. I was like, well, we yeah, don't see I, that corner of the house. No, 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 no. Business stuff. It's more professional to say stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do find it valuable. I, I love, um, that's probably one of the things and I don't listen to it a ton anymore, but that's one of the things that I loved about, um, Michael Hyatt's podcast is getting little snippets into what they didn't do it. At least I didn't see it periodically through social media, you know, on Twitter or Facebook. But always at the end of every episode, there was a snippet of the audio from the next episode so that you could kind of hear what was going on. And that was always when I was listening to it consistently, that was always enough to let me know, am I going to download the next episode or am I going to wait a week just to get that little glimpse? And even if I don't listen to it, I think, well, that's value enough for them to kind of say, this is what we're talking about next week you know don't don't download it i guess unless you know you're subscribed you're going to get it automatically um but yeah that would be something and now i'm thinking like do i need to ask my guy if my guy who's doing the post production to pull out little 30 second snippets of the podcast when i tell him to 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 make little audio files because that's that's a really good idea one other thing that i do is i actually go back through all of the episodes 
and I do tweets. I pull out tweets and Facebook posts as well, um, like of what people actually say, because there's a lot of one-offs that really, um, that really stand on their own. There's a lot of mm-hmm. things that um, that don't don't need a whole lot of context to make sense, and so that's another way that I try to promote the podcast is um, is by actually snagging content out of each individual podcast and putting that out on Twitter and recycling all that. So I want to talk to you real quick. Um, before we're up on 45 minutes. We have 15 minutes left. Um, what I want to talk to you about is um, what was your strategy for launching the podcast? Because I think you did a really good job with that, building up a lot of energy and momentum. What is it that you did? What were kind of the balls that you had juggling up in the air? And what were some of the things that you learned maybe would do different next time? Uh, the the biggest thing that I did after I, I kind of pivoted from this Facebook community to a podcast on Periscope is, and I had a couple people telling me, they're like, you, you just need to pick a date. What date are you launching on? And start mm-hmm. working backwards. And so initially this was, uh, I would say beginning of July. And so I was like, all right, let's do mid-August. And I started planning out, brainstorming what I needed to do in about two or three hours into planning, I was like, there's no way I can do this in six weeks with the amount of time that I have. If I if I wasn't working a full-time job that was completely unrelated to what I'm trying to do, then maybe I could. But I was like, all right, so then let's move it to mid-September. So I gave myself you know, about 10 weeks, eight to 10 weeks. And I said, that's my date. I'm going to do whatever it is that I need to do. And I'm just going to start busting my butt. I talked to my wife about it, said, here's what, here's my plan. Uh, here's the time that I need. And she said, okay, that seems, you know, legit, the, the, legit, you know, that seems it's, you've, you've spread it out. You're not trying to cram this in in a week. Um, I let her know what, what I needed from her. Um, and, and then I just started doing it. I just started being, you almost have to be salesman a little bit. That's where you kind of get into sales. And it's like, this is a new thing. It's not available. People can't listen to an episode beforehand. And so this is where some of those relationships really started to to really play out. And so I was like, all right. So I, I, I was all about relationships, connecting, helping people. How is my podcast going to be beneficial to my guests? How am I building relationships that could could result in someone saying, yeah, I'm comfortable enough to get on your podcast and kind of share what's going on? And so I had to just go out and be very intentional. I had to say, this is what it's about. Even if it's a no from them, and I got some no's from people that said, no, I'm not doing that. But I said, this is what it is. Either you want to do it or you don't want to do it. You want to schedule it and, and make it easy for them as well. So a lot of people will do emails, which I still do that, where we go back and forth and we set up a time. But I'm like, I want to make this, how can I serve them? They're giving me some of their time, their expertise. Yeah. I want to make this simple. And so you know, creating a calendar event where they can just go to a link, they can find a time that's available on your calendar. Or if they give you a link, you should go and find a time on their calendar because it makes them, that's even less work for them to have to do to set it up. Um, and then just roll with it. What are you using for your calendar link? Um, I am using I, th- I used to uh, I started off using Calendly, so it's like it's like calendar, but it ends with Lee, Ly C A L E N D L Y dot com. I use that one. I think the one that I'm using now because it has a little bit uh, visually, it looks a little more, uh, it looks better on a computer screen when people can see. It. It's called You Can Book Me. Uh-huh. You Can Book dot Me. Um, and that's the one I, that I use for my podcast guests. Um, now it's gotten to a point where, where I want to be able to just have a library of people that I can kind of go back to. I've actually created a very brief survey for people because I have people who are asking me, hey, can I be on the podcast? Or hey, what does it take to, to be a guest? Now I have a, a very simple fo- form, a Google form um, that I give them that has six questions on it nice. that they can answer. And then I, then I have all their information, their contact info, their Periscope account so that I can go and check them out and actually see what it is that they're scoping about, um, what they know about the podcast beforehand. But that's helped out a lot. And I'm talking about all the great things that I've done. I, I got everything done. I was way ahead of the game. Like I'm trying to make, I'm making this sound like super easy. Um, but I think it's because I had had put so much knowledge into my head. Like yeah. it was just a matter of executing on what I knew um, and creating the, the time spots of doing it and, and, and just rolling with it. Um, what I what I didn't do well was plan was was market and promote it leading up to the launch. So I let all the people know that I wanted on the on podcast, like, hey, I'm doing a podcast, but I didn't do enough to build up the momentum to that launch. Um, 
And really, if you wait until you launch, you're already behind the game a little bit. People should already be sitting, not on pins and needles. This isn't like this is the greatest thing since, you know, whatever. But there should be a, a group if you're, you're hitting a specific niche. People should be, there are people who are saying, I know you, Ryan, or I know the guests, and I want to I listen to it. I want to listen to the podcast. Let me know when you launch it. Um, and so if I were to do, there are a couple things I would do differently. One is I would do the marketing and promotion for it a lot more upfront. I was so focused on just getting it going and getting it ready to launch that I really didn't tell anyone about it outside of my immediate circle of connections online. Mm -hmm. So the second thing is just how many episodes I launched with. So initially I was going to launch with five, which I probably should have stuck with. But instead I was like, more, more must be a good thing. You know, more is always a better thing. And so I went with 10 because I thought, man, I really want to get some momentum out of the gate. I really want to get some downloads. I want this to show up on new and noteworthy. And what I didn't realize is my podcast episodes are too long for people to consume that many at once. So to, to make 10 episodes available that are anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes a piece, that's anywhere from 350 to 450 minutes. You're looking at six to seven hours of me talking to people about Periscope. <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> so when you put it that way, uh, me and my guests would love to listen to six and seven hours of us talking about Periscope, but how many other people are going to actually have that, especially with me coming out with another episode a week later? Like, who the heck is going to listen to 10 episodes in seven days that are yeah. that long? That's There's just no way. I would, but, you know, I'm the host. So... <laughs> um, so what I what I learned afterwards, and I wish I would have found this somewhere else, is release enough episodes that you hit about two hours of content. So if that's an hour like Dak Talk is, and you only release two episodes. If they're 20 minutes, sure, then 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 you release five, six, seven, or whatever. If they're 10 minutes, great, then you can release 10 and you don't have a problem. Um, but if I had to do it over again, I would have stuck with three to five um, and just banked those five to roll out you know, the following weeks after. Well, you did a lot better than I did. I just kind of started putting episodes out there. So at least you had a strategy. Um, the way we launched the church marketing podcast, um, was I recorded many interviews. Um, so that, well, not many interviews. It, we're get uh, min M I N I, not M A N Y M I N I, uh, mini. mini interviews. So instead of being like 30 minutes long, 35 minutes long, uh, they were like 10 minutes long. And so I just recorded a sequence of those and I said the first full length one will be in May. So that's kind of how we did it. And even looking at the stats right now, those mini interviews are down at the very bottom, um, but they've had like 900 downloads, 872, 1,016 downloads. Um, wow. Let me see. And those, uh, not 698 for the first one, 642 for the second one. So wow. like- they were still downloaded a significant number of time. Our biggest episode download so far is um, just under 2,000, um, and that was May from 14. Um, the second biggest is um, April of 2015, and that's at uh, 1,700 downloads. So, like, it wow. just takes time. It builds up over time. and um, But our most recent one only has 600 and se 676 plays. So... You know, you just got to be diligent. There will be ebbs and flows. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that you never really know what things are going to look like until you've been in it for a full year. And once you've been in it for mm -hmm. a full year, you see people's listening behaviors. You see, you know, when it's going to be easier to get a guest, when it's going to be harder, things like that. So, dude, yeah. we're coming up towards the end, um, the end here. Um, is there anything else that you want to share that we haven't talked about yet as it relates to your podcast and kind of what you've been cultivating on Periscope, things like that? Um, I, you kind of, you were kind of hitting what I was saying that is, is don't get discouraged right away. Um, stick with it for six months, stick with it for a year. Um, and just let it ride through all the different seasons that are going on. Some of them you probably aren't even aware of that will exist in, podcasting or blogging or whatever it is that you're going on exist in your business that you have going on um, that exists just in the normal ebbs and flows of where your guests are located. We were in the U.S. So, you know, there's seasons that just give it time um, and have realistic expectations. Um, 
if you if you're only able to commit a couple hours a week like I am, you can't expect to be having you can't expect to launch a podcast and have 30,000 downloads an episode right off the bat or 20 or 5,000. You know, you you've got to have realistic expectations that at the bare minimum, I'm creating this to as as a as a valuable free tool for people to learn more about Periscope, to get more out of it, to understand what the platform can do, to understand the variety of people who are using it, and to really see, wow, I can really connect with people online. This is a great tool for building relationships with people who are nerdy about the same thing that I'm nerdy about. And yeah. here they are on Periscope talking about it. Um, and so that's that's probably the big encouraging things for me is when people shoot out a tweet or reply to an email and say, hey, this I love this episode because I've been wanting to find somebody who 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 talks about these things or I love this as well. And so I wouldn't have known about it had I not listened to the podcast. Had someone not mentioned this podcast or this episode for me to listen to. Um and so don't get discouraged. But then also have people, you know, I think you and I would would admit that having people around is helpful as well because yeah. we as we get stuck in our um our, our 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 cesspool of self doubt self doubt at times where we're just kind of waiting in this like oh I'm horrible or oh this is a failure. It's good to have other people who are who are recognizing things who can bring things to the forefront. Like hey this is going well. Hey have you given any consideration to this? Um, don't do it by yourself. Get out there and and share what's going on. Share the statistics. Share the data. Don't be worried about anyone stealing or copying what you're doing. Just get some accountability with it. Make sure that you're not just the only one that's bouncing ideas off about your uh, about your podcast or your project or whatever it is that you guys uh, have going on. Dude, that's such a good word. I'll tell you what, even today, like as we're recording this right now, today I had to send a message to one of my buddies um, and I, was, I just sent him, I said, Jordan, I just need some encouragement, man. He goes, why? I said, it's been a pretty crummy day on Periscope and as much as I broadcast, about, you know, not worrying about how many followers you have and things like that. Like everybody gets discouraged. Like everybody mm -hmm. does. The mm -hmm. billionaires that you see, you're like, oh, they have no problems. They got more problems that you and I would ever dream of having. And we would never want those problems. Yeah. Everyone's got issues. And mm -hmm. so having somebody to go to and say, look, I just need a little bit of encouragement or, hey, this isn't going the way I need it to go. Like, can you help me figure out where we're where we're breaking it down here and where we need to improve. I think that's such a good word and it's so true. So really quick, are they actually, because I heard somebody say earlier today that Periscope has actually scaled back the amount of alerts that they're, or notifications that they're sending out. Is that true? Do you know? Um, I don't know from personal experience because uh, honestly, I, I don't have alerts. <laughs> I've turned the notification, the alerts off. No, 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 no. Like when you send out, like when you broadcast, Less uh -huh. people who follow you are getting alerts. Like Periscope oh, is really? withholding alerts and notifications. No, I had not. See, you're you're imparting wisdom on me. I had not. I was not aware that they were. Is that like a conspiracy theory, or people are I don't legitimately? Know. I heard it today. Um, let me see. That's Here. no bueno. If that's if that's true, um, I don't know why they would would do that. I feel like that's a little. That's almost like. Facebook not letting Facebook pages uh, broadcast or, or share posts with their entire fan base. Yeah, but I yeah, that would be that would be interesting if that's what's uh, if that's what's happening. So I have Periscope going right now, um, and uh, Michelle just uh, said she hasn't noticed a difference. So make more proof that you need your own list. Yeah, <laughs> um, Travel Girl yep. just said this is more proof that you need your own list, and I would agree mm -hmm. with that. Like. That's one of the things that I that I pushed you into doing. That's one of the things that I push everybody into doing is no matter what you're trying to build, whether it's a podcast or anything else, you need to have an email list because you're sending out um, new episode information mm -hmm. to a list, right? Every time there's a yep. new episode, you're yep. sending out a notification, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. You got to do that. Week. It's an immediate audience, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's immediate audience. It's... uh. I mean, because a lot of times they're not going to, there's a lot of people who listen every week and they don't, they don't subscribe. They just listen to the episode when it's available. They download the episode straight from the website. And so they're not going to, um, they're not going to know about it unless I'm, I'm, I'm making them aware of it. They just don't go on iTunes unless they're notified that there's something there that they need to go get. So yeah, the list has been powerful for that. Yeah. Very good, man. Well, Hey, 
Um, you are just, you have this passion to connect people with what they need. Um, and you really try to make things simple for people who want to do Periscope. Do you have anything um, available or any connection that you'd like to make people aware of so that they can start broadcasting on their own so that they can start, um, you know, building an audience to where when they want to launch a podcast, they launch to 10, 50, a hundred people rather than launching to crickets. Yeah. Um, if, if you're saying, Hey, this Periscope thing, okay, Ryan and Dave have talked about it enough or they both talk about it on their own. Now they're talking about it together. I'm ready to go. I do have a little, a little guide that I put together. Um, which is just, it's just a DIY guide. It's a way for you to just kind of say, okay, give me the basic steps. What are some things that I can do, uh, to, to start off strong on the platform? Uh, and so if you just go to ryanbellello.me slash periscope guide, there'll be a free resource there that you guys can just pop in your email address. I'll send it to you via email. Um, and it's, it's really simple. Um, it's really, it's, it's not easy necessarily, but it's a simple one, two, you just work on them in progression. And, if you're someone who doesn't like being on video, you don't actually have to get on Periscope and record a broadcast until step nine or step five of nine. So that you get you get a good four steps into using and, and getting acquainted with the platform and how it works before I finally say, okay, now it's time to get on camera and now it's time to record what what it is that you're, you know, now it's time to broadcast. Um, so that's a resource for it. If you're wanting to do relationships, you can just go to ryanbelow.me and there's a free resource on connecting with influencers right there on my homepage that you can take access, get access to as well. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And what's your Twitter handle? Twitter handle is Ryan, R-Y-A-N underscore Bellello, B as in boy, I-L-E-L-L-O. That's like Jello. Jello, hello, yellow, mellow, fellow. You've done that before. <laughs> just a few times, just to give people an idea of what my name looks like, or sa- sounds like when you pronounce it. That's funny. And Periscope's <laughs> the same screen, the same username. Yes, sir. It's the exact the exact same name. So believe All it or right, not, there's dude. another Ryan Bellello. Man, thanks so much for talking tonight. This was a lot of fun. I love talking gear. I love talking, you know, experiences, stuff like that. So hopefully, we've equipped a few people with at least the very basis of what they need to be thinking about as they contemplate launching their very own podcast. And I say, do it, man. Like Mm -hmm. do it, give it a whirl, have fun with it, enjoy it, launch it. And if you need to pivot, pivot. So, all right, man, Ryan, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And, uh, we'll have to have you back again. Maybe, I don't know, sometime. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. It was great to hang out with you, bud. (laughs) 